on today's episode of Moto Cheese. So what's up boys? Pick me up another e-bike. This one is an off-road e-bike. A Janssen X50 off-road electric bike. It does not look like that, but that would have been pretty cool to get this thing assembled so we could test her out. I know, I always like opening it this way. So I don't have to lift the bike out, but you do have to worry about these staples. It does have front and rear suspension. Let's see what they give us in our box of goodies here. Nice big headlight. Ah, nice bike cable lock. It's got a little clip. I wonder if there's a spot to put it on the bike. The battery charger. 54.8 volts, 2 amps max. It does take that special plug. Oh, look at that. A little air pump. Yeah, it's better than nothing when you have nothing. Now it comes with a phone mount. Holds my big S24. That looks pretty secure. We'll see. See how that is. Wow, look at that. Now that's actually an awesome idea right here. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Allen wrench. Square drive. Looks like a number one Phillips. Flat blade regular screwdriver. Oh, I see. That's for the three sockets. It's an 8, 9, and 10 millimeter socket. And that's for the sockets. 8, 10, and 15 millimeter wrench. And that says 14 GE. I wonder what that's for. What? No beer can opener? That's nice. I like that. A couple stamped wrenches. The pedals, which are an aluminum alloy. Right hand thread goes on the right side. Left hand thread goes on the left side. I don't think those little stamp wrenches will give you enough power, so probably use a bigger wrench. And what's this? A little face mask, neckerchief, or whatever the heck they call these. So you look mean going down the road. Hope there's a spot to put these tools. Back fender's already installed. Looks like a cool design. Let's get to cutting these zip ties off. Pro wheel. This is a class two or three. You disconnect this wire to make it a class three. So we're gonna do that right now before I forget. There's your motor controller. Looks like they just sit it in there. Looks like this is the seat. Geno bike. Nice stitching on the vinyl. Nice twist throttle. Eighth turn, roughly, yeah. LCD display. What was that, blinkers? No way. And a horn. And high low headlight. Or just headlight. We'll see if it has high and low. There's your keys. Here's where your battery connects. Some nice welds. I like what I see so far. Yeah, it does have blinkers. <laughs> Look at that. That's pretty cool. First e-bike I ever got with blinkers. It's really not a bad idea when you think about it. With all the crazies on the road, if you don't have to use hand signals, it makes you a bit safer. So it is a 20 by 4.0, 100-406 tire, CST BFT 20 by 4. Inflates at 20 psi. Might be pretty close right now. Your front axle voltage right here with a quick release. A 
bearings feel really good. I have gotten some of these e-bikes where you have to adjust a front bearing. So it's a good idea to check it while you're assembling. The neck is pointing the wrong way for assembly. Alright guys, <laughs> I did make that mistake. I think the first e-bike I did. But they leave it loose is a good indicator that it's facing the wrong way. It does not have adjustable front forks, but they are oil dampened. Here's the battery. It seemed to slide out of wherever it was supposed to be secure. So this is a 48 volt, 12.8 amp hour, 614.4 watt hour, 54.6 volt charge. Lithium ion, Johnso. Here's your charge port. Let's start that charging while I assemble the rest of this bike. Jeffro don't like these type of plugs. I assume you have to have the power on to charge. Let's see. Nope, doesn't matter. Power on or off to charge. Here's your locking mechanism that locks it into the holder. It does have a USB connector on it for hooking up your phone or whatnot. Here's your front fender. Some kind of ABS plastic. So it won't crack on you. A couple more zip ties here. Get my handy dandy Swiss Army tool here. I always try to check if this is directional because on motorcycles they are sometimes. There's no arrow so I assume not. But I still put it on the direction I took it off though. I'll try to center it with the neural marks that are on the handlebars. We'll do some fine tuning later on this. Trying to just eyeball this with the handlebars. You can get it fairly close. Lost one there. Must have fell out somewhere. Well, we'll look for that later. Something cold forged. Pro wheel cold forged. A00F170. The first time I saw a keeper like that. So it looks like you can have that quick disconnect come off either side. Keep one spring on each side. Oh, good thing I didn't squeeze the brakes. I don't see a keeper. It has cable brakes, so it's not that big of a deal honestly so the front brake is an f160 slash r140 brake assembly it's pretty tight like that See how that box works out nicely? Now we can flip the kickstand. That's the motor controller, 25 amps. It's showing a little bit. Maybe I'll put a little piece of tape on that. I figure I'd check these connections while I'm here. That should do it. There's really no where to tie wrap this. I could try to tie wrap it to one of these wires, possibly. Is one of these long enough still? 
you don't want to wrap a rag or anything around it because it does need the aluminum outside to work as a heat sink. That's a little better. That'll work. If it rattles, I'll maybe put a little piece of two-sided tape here and put it up against this bar. I don't know how long that would last either, but let me see if I have any. I guess I don't. I'll pick some up. You know what I didn't see is a manual. No manual. Maybe they forgot to put it in the box? I have to get a license plate holder. I have to go to Walmart and see if they have a name one for a bicycle. You know, like they put on a kid's bike. It says cheese. I doubt it. They won't have that. We'll use these cheesy wrenches. No pun intended. Well, maybe. 10 millimeter. Doesn't say. These are like motorcycle blinkers. Cheesy wrench. I know it's not the proper size. I had to guess the rubber would be on the inside when you put this together between the lamp and the bracket. up and down looking at the LED I have to flip it up to see it so I would say that's up test that out at night Let me get my longer screwdriver Tighten this whole headlight assembly down, the brackets and everything. Plug her in. That's a left hand thread. Right hand thread on the right. Yeah. I'd advise using a better wrench, 15 millimeter. I wonder if there's a spot to put this. If any of you guys purchased one of these, let me know. Really no birthmarks. Just that one little scrape that I could see so far. This go on the front or the back? Hope it's as fast as it looks, boys. Battery's still charging. It's a little warm. We'll let her charge up fully. So that was a pretty quick assembly. Under an hour, I found where this rubber piece went. Assembly's not done yet. For bicycles only. Oh, there we go. You gotta really push it. Now it won't come off. I'm going to use a second slot. I didn't find that. Or another one. And it's got a horn. It must be built in the headlight. Pretty good steel. It's a two and a half. Which I don't have. You can adjust your lever from here. Unlock it. Take up on these a little bit. A little more on this one. Still charging. See if you can find that Allen bolt. Nope. I'll have to see if they send me one. I 
Oh well, it happens. It does not have regenerative charging. Sounds like the front's touching a little bit, so we might have to do a little bit of adjustment there. Front brake, that is. And usually, you loosen these bolts, squeeze the brake, and then tighten it in place. Tighten these up, and that should work. That's better. That's a pretty cool looking bike. Again, with that style seat, you can't adjust it up and down. So you're sitting lower so you don't get as good crank power on the pedals as you would if you had a regular bike and you usually jack your seat up where your leg is straight on the pedal with it down. I do more battery power than pedal power so it only suck if you run out of battery and you got to do full pedal power. It's all charged up. Let's put it on there. Lock it. Pull it in the shade so we could see. Woo! Hot seat! Alright, so the power's here. It's in kilometers. Let's see if we could switch it. No. I don't know, guys. Oh, that's a walk mode to email the manufacturer so it just turns the headlight on and off it doesn't have high and low there's the horn left blinker right blinker Headlight on, headlight off. That's with the headlight on and the brake. Rear brake. Front brake. Turn the headlight back off. So it looks like you got two USB ports. One under here on the display and one over here on the battery. Last time I didn't have a two and a half millimeter I used a Torx gonna fit pretty good yeah that's good t15 Torx oh, the shocks are working pretty good Forty-six point four kilometers. I have to figure that out in miles an hour. Or I could put my thing back on. I think I'll do that. Open that Gaia app again because it'll give us our track, how far we went. I only went one kilometer. Let's go. much flatter than this. Ready?
seats don't feel too bad. Just soaking up some of them bumps. We'll do all battery power. Or mostly. Looks like we use one bar of battery. That cruises along good at like 27 miles an hour though. Which that's saying 47 kilometers. Dangerous road to be on with a bike. There's no bike lane. I only have to go down about a mile. And try to make a big loop. Come back around through the woods, through the trails. Sidewalk. High gear, you gotta really pedal like crazy. And I was only doing 25. Like I said on the last few that I reviewed, I wish I had a higher high gear. Or a higher highest gear. Gotta get the hedge trimmers out. Whoops. Handles pretty good. You know, this seat's pretty comfortable. I've been riding for a while now. Not bad. It doesn't have cruise, which is when you hold your throttle for a long period of time and it sets it at that speed. I'm not much of a fan of that anyway. Look at the way she handles. <laughs> Thanks. I love your hat. <laughs> Hope you guys heard that. Fender loosened up. I'll get on the other side and fix it. Jeez, jeez. Didn't tighten up the fender? Good thing I brought my tools. We're going to have to put some extra torque on her. There. That's tight. That's what she said. You don't need any water yet. I can't believe I went as far as I did. I went right past where I was supposed to go. I hope that woman don't cat call me again. I feel a little violated. <laughs> Who made these sidewalks? It's 
almost like they're deterrent bicycles. Even though the rear shock is pretty stiff and I'm 235 pounds, it actually does help. The forks too. This is, wow, super sandy. And bumpy. Doing all right. A little better than I thought. Whoa! Well, that's what I was afraid of. Wow, do you guys see that? Cat-like reflexes. Holy cow. Yeah, I was afraid of that. So we won't be using that anymore. It says bike. But this is very bumpy. I wasn't even paying attention until I saw it starting to fall off. That could have been catastrophic. Sugar sand isn't easy. As long as I don't have to pedal back. This is very bumpy. Exactly doing better than I thought. We got a little air in there, boys. See some wild boar prints. Footprints. Oh, that's really bad. Oh. That's loaded down. That was really soft. But the tires work well in this sand. Unbelievably well. battery flashing. That's all right though. We're at the panty tree. For all you guys that watch my other videos. I just kick this stupid thing off. Yeah. Ah, oh, where are you? I'm on our road. I'm on the bike. I'm all the way out by the panty tree. I can come back though. I'm heading back. If you don't mind. Yeah, I'll head back. I'm low battery, but I think I can make it. All right, I'll be there. Bye. Well, my son's stuck with his work van, so let's see if we can make it back. Maybe I better lower my mode down to like three so I don't use as much battery. And maybe pedal a little bit, Chizo. You know, I kind of like this seat. I think it's way more comfortable than a bike seat. lost it. Well, I don't know if this battery is going to make it. It's flashing. Sure, go a couple miles in the woods, cheesy. Yeah. 
Jeez. We're rough. Come on, you can do it, X50. Half a mile to go, roughly. Until we get to the road, anyway. Another mile. Or two. whole road and trail and I hardly have any battery it's flashing I think we're gonna make it Wide open with a flashing battery. Let's see if we make it. I'm gonna make it. Made it. What battery to spare? Let me go get my kid. Pulled out. I took the bike out this way and I was just saying, wow, this road is shot. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here. This stayed on. I thought it would time out. But it's still showing I have three or five battery bars. You want to try it? And I'll do a video. Woo! <laughs> Don't mind my neighbor's boats and stuff. <laughs> Woo, got a wheelie. I kind of like it. I think it's actually kind of cool. Almost looks like a retro motorcycle. He knows when you're braking. Oh yeah, it won't let you go. All the bikes do that. Yeah, I'm moving. It's pretty tight. It is tight, but it definitely works. Do the front. Pretty cool. Looks like a little dirt bike. <laughs> Are you sure that fender's the right way? 17 kilometers. No, I'm not sure. I don't I know if it's supposed to go behind it. I would think it would go behind it because for up, throwing mud, right? Up here, it's not going to stop anything. But So let's move this front fender into the proper location. Uh, I figured the mud would stop it from here, but this would look more like a dirt bike. But I guess I was wrong. It indeed belongs on the back side. Sure, that baby's tight, huh? Loosened up on us. And that's the way it's supposed to go. It just looked better the other way. This served a better purpose, I believe. If I could bend this a little more. Could bend it to form a little better, but I think I think that's the way it's supposed to be right there, boys. Even though it says it has half battery on the meter. This meter is probably a little more accurate than a lot of the bikes I've ridden because when you're pulling the amperage full throttle, it's showing you how much battery there is because it's reading the voltage a little faster. And then when you let off, you can see the battery voltage come back up, which kind of tells you if you keep it pegged, it's going to die. 
but then you might still have a little bit of power if you're using low power. So for an accurate reading, when you're riding, you have to stop with no load, no throttle, no pedaling, and it'll read out what it is. And sometimes when these batteries sit, the charge seems to creep back up because it's reading voltage. Well, let it charge up. Then take it for another test. So to power this on, make sure you have the switch on. Hold the M button for a couple seconds, it'll power on. You turn it off the same way, you hold it a couple seconds. Hold the plus and minus for three seconds, it'll get you into the setup mode. P01 is your brightness, we'll keep that on two. P02 is how you change it from miles per hour to kilometers. Zero is kilometers, one is miles per hour. Hit the M. P03 is your voltage settings. For the battery you have, we have a 48 volt battery, so we'll keep that. There's nothing for P04. P05 is your gear level settings or your levels for pedal assist. It was on three. We're going to change it to 5. P06 is your wheel diameter. It is a 22 inch diameter wheel. If your speedometer is off, you can adjust it through here, fine tune it. Nothing for P07. Nothing for P08. P09 is your mode setting for zero start or for one start. I'm not exactly sure what that is. P10 is your boost mode, handlebar mode, or mix mode. One is handlebar mode, two is mix mode. Zero is pedal. P14 because there's no instructions for any of the others is a controller current setting which is set at 12 amps that's default we'll try that to see if it makes it any better starting off more power and then we have to get to P17 that one is automatic cruise one is for yes, but it doesn't have, it wasn't working. Zero is for no. For some reason it was not working. And the rest of them, there is no explanation what it does. So I'm not sure. Then you can let it time out. I want to find a manual somewhere. It would be nice. Now I set that current limiter to 20 amps. Or if this has any better boost. Let's try it in the dark. You have to excuse the subpar audio on my bike ride, the first one. Stupid GoPro block. Didn't record any audio. But I brought my little body camera. I had to sync up the audio and it's it's not that great. But it works. And this has infrared on it. We'll see how she works. Charged her up. But it should be on miles per hour now. Oh yeah. And I did crank up the amperage, or the amperage limiter, to see if it does any better. I don't know. I think it feels like it's definitely got more power. Oh man, that is bright. Wow, that's a bright light. What the heck is that noise? Is it the back shock? 
Hmm, it is. I'll check it out tomorrow. Let's do a little walk around. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it's much brighter at night. That tail light and the brakes are. Huh. They'll see you. Woo! <laughs> Look at that headlight. Wow. zero to 10 15 and 20 where we can see that speedometer I hope I hope we could see the speedometer <laughs> how's it going I thought you stuck Woo. you can't catch me come on and try <laughs> Woo, pulling wheelies. This microphone better be working. I tested before I left. So some of that clunking is the front forks because there's no rebound. But some of it is the little motor controller under the seat clunking. I gotta get some two-sided tape. I gotta find a good flat here. I guess we'll go to the same spot we were last time. I'm surprised how good that light is. The headlight is really good. I don't know if turning up that current limiter is going to avoid the warranty. Ready, set, go. 10. 15. 20. See what we get for a top speed. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine point two, twenty-nine point seven. Wow. And when it was on kilometers, it was like dead on accurate. This thing almost does 30 miles an hour and I'm fat. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna wanna dim that. <laughs> I bet you it's so bright you can't see it. But I do have my little body camera too, so hopefully you can see it with one of these, one or the other. All right, ready, set, go. 10, 15. Use the blinkers. I really like this bike. Under $900. Wow. There, you know, I wish I had better dampening on the forks and adjustments and, but for what it is, for the price, this thing rips. Even on the dirt, I'm doing like 26, almost 27 miles an hour. 27. Caught the car. I'm brave going this fast down this road. Here's them dogs. Wheelie. Ha ha. Whoa. Uh oh. Oh shit. Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> That's where everybody gets stuck. Surprised they didn't wipe out. Settle down. <laughs> Burning a rubber offer. I got 13 miles total. Man, I bet you that's too bright for this camera. I hope maybe my body camera got it. I got both on. Let's go in and check it out. 
So it's definitely coming from the shock. Yep, they did it. This phone holder is good if you're going to keep it on road. I wouldn't use it for off road, as you saw in the video. Never did find a spot to put this. But as you can see, I have my own bike bag. They're pretty cheap. That's a small one. Holds a water bottle and all the tools. And this would fit in there. So now it comes down to my impressions of this bike. For an entry level e bike, the price of $889 is pretty hard to beat for what you get. And I've reviewed a few of these bikes already. They claim 20 to 37 miles on a battery charge. It's consistent with the same kind of bike, with the same battery and the same wattage hub. This bike does not have an aluminum frame, it has a high carbon steel frame, but it still weighs only 80 pounds. So it's not a heavy bike for this style bike by no means. They claim a 30 degree incline climbing capability. I don't really have anything here to test it on, but I believe it will do it. And it does have the smaller 20 inch fat tires, which I kind of like. Some people don't like the fat tires because if you're going to stay on the road and you're not really going to go into sand or any kind of off-roading type of stuff, you're better off staying with the thinner tires because it has less drag. But as you can see around here and at my place up north, there's a lot of sand or mud, loose dirt, leaves. These tires are definitely better for that type of terrain. This bike also comes with a one year warranty. It does not come with a user's manual, but the seller is going to send me a digital version, so I will link that in the description below. Not having a manual is not that big of a deal for putting it together if you're somewhat mechanical, but the digital display, the LCD, is a little tough to get around if you don't have a manual. One thing off-roading that I did find a little annoying was those front forks have no rebound dampening at all. And I don't know what they're using for the rebound when that fork is fully extended, but you can hear it click once in a while. And the motor controller under the seat, which I did not get any two-sided tape yet. But I did hear that banging around. There's really no place to put any tools, but those cheap bike bags... I forget what that cost me, maybe six or eight dollars. The headlight, I was super, super surprised by the headlight, how bright it was. By far the brightest headlight of all the e-bikes I've ever tested. And having the blinkers, that headlight, and a brake light, that makes it a whole lot safer, especially at night. I think the bike is a win for the price. I really like it, and I, I rank it up on probably one of my top favorites of all the e-bikes that I've tested even though it's on the lower price range of what I've tested so I think they did a pretty good job a couple things that they could do to improve it is maybe a, an adjustable suspension with some rebound on the front forks maybe shorten this up or maybe a little bit more rigid steel for the rear and the front fender but they'll work, they just they don't make any noise, they just flop around a little bit. So yeah, if you're looking for a cool looking bike that's like a motorcycle, I'll have the links down below. If they give me any kind of discount codes, I'll have that there too. And thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products used are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.